Well, hello everybody. So in this video, I'm going to be doing a top 5 list for my dream reasonable to keep reptiles. Let's get into this video. So let's start this list off with number 5, the Pueblin Milk Snake. And as you can see, the reason this is on my dream reasonable to keep reptile list is pretty self-explanatory. Just look at the colors of this snake. Now this is probably the closest thing I can get to owning a coral snake without owning a highly venomous snake that can kill a person with one bite. Now I'm no Pueblin milk snake expert or milk snake expert in general, but I do know they are not the most difficult thing to keep. Some people even putting it as a beginner species of snake, which from what I've seen, I think it fits. So overall, a Pueblin milk snake is a way better alternative than a snake that can turn a person into past tense. Coming in at number four might be a shocker to some people, but it's actually the garter snake. And the reason garter snakes are on this list is because I absolutely love garter snakes. I think it's so cool how many morphs they come in. And if you don't know what a morph is, it's essentially the paint job on the snake scales. But as I was saying, they come in a bunch of different colors and you can do something called cohabitate them. So you can keep them in a group, which I think is really cool because they're also a diurnal species, which means they're awake during the day. But more scientifically correct, a crepuscular species, which means more awake at dawn and dusk, but mainly a diurnal species. And they also love to exhibit basking behavior. So you'll see them out in their enclosure during the day a lot more than you'd see, say, a ball python out of his enclosure. So I think it's really cool that you'd be able to watch the snakes move around and explore their environment. So that's why they're on this list. And they're pretty easy to take care of. And I almost forgot to mention, garter snakes are not just one species. There's multiple like the California red-sided garter, which is my favorite, the checkered garter, and the common garter, just to name a few. And coming in at number three on this list is the Lichianus gecko. And the reason these geckos are on this list is because they are the largest species of gecko in the world. Some can get the size of your forearm. And... The only thing holding me back from wanting to get one of these, well, I want one, but I can't afford one. They can range from $800 all the way to $2,000 for one gecko. Basically, all I can say is very expensive, but pretty easy to take care of. They basically are a giant crested gecko. They basically have the same care, same temperatures, which is room temperature, and same habits, and they eat the same food. Coming in at number two on this list is the BCI, AKA Boa Constrictor Imperator, or Boa Constrictor Imperator. Doesn't really matter how you say it, I just prefer to say Imperator. Now most people who are uneducated about reptiles that are watching this are probably like, Maddox, how can you put a Boa Constrictor on a list about reasonable pet reptiles? Don't they get huge? But let me educate you about something. All the movies and things like that get it wrong and they put constrictors, boa constrictors, anacondas, just the constrictor family as a whole as being ruthless monsters that all they do is constrict things and kill things. Now, boa constrictors and all constrictors constrict things and kill things, but only to eat them. And boa constrictors, they don't get huge like how movies portray them to be 30 feet long. The largest boa I've ever seen was 10 feet long, and that's a big boa. And most boas for the males, especially for Central American boas, are ranging from 4 to 5 feet. And the females only getting around 7 to 8 feet, and both of those are a pretty reasonable size. Now the females are getting a bit larger, 
but the males are a really reasonable size to keep and be able to house and handle safely. And also their care is not the hardest care in the world. So they're pretty easy, not as easy as a ball python, but they are pretty easy to take care of. And on top of all that, boa constrictors are not mean or monstrous. The only time I've ever seen a aggressive or more properly known a defensive boa constrictor was when I was holding a baby one and it struck at me once. When you can't blame it, when you're a noodle with a head, the world is a scary place. And when you're a tiny noodle with a head, the world is an even scarier place. But when I've handled some of the bigger boas that I've handled up to like six feet, they are absolute sweethearts. I have never seen a boa around three feet in length be defensive. But that's all I gotta say about boas. I love them. But coming up on this number one spot is actually my favorite species of snake. And coming in at the number one spot, my number one dream reasonable to keep reptile and also my number one favorite species of snake is the coastal carpet python. Now, coastal carpet pythons are the largest species of carpet python in the whole family of Morelia spilota, which is all the carpet pythons. And the whole family of Morelia consists of green tree pythons, Boland's pythons, and all the carpet pythons and scrub pythons. I'm pretty sure if I'm getting that right. Um... I don't know why I love the Morelia family so much. I think it's something with the heads. Cause they have such a big head and big muscles behind their heads. So it makes them have a pretty powerful bite. But they have a really cool big head. And especially with the coastal carpet pythons, most people like jungle carpet pythons, which are a really vibrant gold and black snake. And I can see why some people think that's pretty, but I prefer more natural snakes. That's why I have a normal ball python. So I like the coastals because they're a more dullish gray color. And their care isn't the hardest in the world, needing pretty large range of care requirements that they can tolerate. They can have basking temperatures or under tank heating from around... 86 degrees all the way to 92 degrees and they can also have their well this is a guarantee they have to have this a humidity level from 45 to 60 percent so that is a really wide range of humidity you can keep them at and also being the largest species of carpet python they're not as arboreal as most carpet pythons because carpet pythons are a semi-arboreal snake being in the same family as the green tree python which is a fully arboreal snake but carpet pythons are semi-arboreal and the coastals are probably the least arboreal of all the carpet pythons that are mostly arboreal because of their size, they can't really get in the trees too much. So they prefer to stay on the ground. They'll still climb a little bit, but they prefer to stay on the ground and just chill on the ground. And also, being a large carpet python doesn't mean that they are a terrible size. So the males ranging from four to six feet, that's a pretty reasonable size to keep. And females getting upwards to eight, nine, even ten feet. I've seen the largest ones. So there's a huge gap from male and female carpet pythons. So males can comfortably live in a four by two by two foot enclosure, and females are going to need something a little bit bigger. But a four foot by two foot by two foot enclosure for a male isn't too hard to supply. So that's the reason they're on this reasonable list because they aren't the hardest snakes to house and their temperament when they get a little bit bigger is great they become pretty tame as long as you work with them but when they're babies they can be pretty bitey because they start out super small i'm talking like 
maybe a foot when they start out, which in reality is only around this big. So that is not a big snake at all. So they'll be much scared, well, much more scared as a baby than they'll be as a yearling or an adult. And they also, like I was explaining, don't have hard care requirements. And overall, I think they are gorgeous. And another thing, the reason carpet pythons get their name is because apparently they resemble oriental carpets. So that's how they got their name, carpet pythons, because their patterns resemble an oriental carpet. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in my next video.